with the release of the new Take Control engine utilizing the MSP Anywhere product, uh, we wanted to give you a short demonstration of how to deploy it, as well as uh, a couple of the basic features of the new engine. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to settings and we're gonna go down to take control and settings. And this will be you know, familiar to most people who have used the dashboard. We have servers and workstations. I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna change the policy for A1 Demo Corp. Now I'm gonna change it from the Team Viewer engine to the MSP Anywhere engine and click OK. And I'm gonna right click on this device and run checks to get it to deploy a little bit faster. And you can see it's already changed to pending there. Now, while we're waiting for that to deploy, which will only take just a minute or two, I'm going to go to settings and take control and talk about the take control policies for a second. Okay, so you'll start out with your default policy and then you can add as many policies as you want. As you can see, I have added an A1 demo policy. So I'm gonna click on that and click edit. And we have three different sections in this. Uh, the general tab just gives you the ability to change the policy name, uh, change it to a monitor only session, or do uh, change the ancient UI language. So that's the language that's used in the interface on the remote device. Now, the security tab is where it starts to get interesting. Uh, we can request user permission. If we click that, then a whole bunch of these uh, come alive. Now, one of the differences that you'll see in these policies versus policies for other features is because we have two engines for uh, this one feature, the different configuration items for each of those uh, different engines is denoted by their icon. So anything with this icon, uh, the little star-shaped icon, that is for MSP Anywhere. And then if it has the little satellite dish, that's a TeamViewer engine only configuration item. Now, if it doesn't have an icon, that means that configuration item applies to both. So if I turn on request user permission, I have three settings for MSP Anywhere, and then I have one setting for TeamViewer. So the TeamViewer engine allows me to re, uh, request user permission, but it only has the ability to permit me to connect to the login screen as an additional option of that feature. MSP Anywhere adds the ability for me to change the request text. Now, to me, this is very important because it allows you to customize the message that the customer is presented with so they know it's you trying to connect. You know, put your company name in there, whatever you need to, in order to make it look, you know, like it's you and it's legitimate. We can modify how long to display the request for, and that comes into effect more when we use it with the next feature, which is after the request times out, allow remote control. So this is another granular feature that uh, is not available in the TeamViewer engine, where if the user doesn't respond to your request to connect, by checking this box, it does allow you to proceed and connect to the device. Now, um, if you don't check that, obviously you won't be able to, to connect to the device. Now, lock device when the remote session ends, uh, that one, uh, basically does, uh, you can do the same thing in TeamViewer, but you have to configure it on every single device that you want to do it on. Here you can set it in the policy if you're using the MSP Anywhere engine. The show visual indicator just gives the end user a visual indication that somebody's logged into their uh, computer remotely. This is required by a lot of compliance um, organizations, so you may have to require this to be you know, left on by default. Uh, especially if it's in the medical field uh, and you're having to do with HIPAA compliance. Um, the authentication method is just an additional way for you to add a security layer to the, uh, the remote access uh, via take control. So you can change this to a preset password that you would set here in the dashboard, or you can set it to operating system authentication requiring them to be able to log into the computer um, using credentials, either local device credentials or domain credentials uh, for that network. And then of course we have the enable system tray password. This is a team viewer specific setting and it just uh, places a password on the system tray icon uh, on the remote device so that the end user cannot change any of those team viewer settings. The performance option um, allows us to optimize the desktop settings when in session, uh, disable hardware acceleration, uh, that's mainly for older machines, uh, limit image capture, again, that's 
primarily for older machines, and then attempt a peer-to-peer -peer connection first. Now the peer-to-peer -peer connection attempts to connect via UDP as opposed to TCP. If it can't connect via UDP within a number of seconds, it basically defaults right back to TCP. Uh, but UDP does provide a faster connection, so by checking that box, it will try that first. Okay, so I'm gonna save those settings and hit close. And I'm gonna refresh this. And this is going to now show me that it's green. And if I wanna verify which engine the device is using, I can simply go to the summary tab for that device and scroll down to the take control. And in parentheses, it will actually tell me whether it's the MSP Anywhere or Team Viewer engine that is active on the device. Okay, so connecting to the remote devices just like using TeamViewer, I can either click on the take control button or I can right click on the device and go to remote access and hit take control. And that takes me straight to the device. Now I can change my view to expand this out a little bit. So I'll go to size and maybe do 80%. Let me drag my screen out a little bit more so you can see that. And there's all kinds of things I can do from the view menu. I can change the size, I can change the color depth. Uh, one of the interesting features of the new MSP Anywhere engine is if I'm connected to a terminal server, I can connect to, uh, I can select which terminal session I actually want to connect to, uh, which is really handy when you're supporting users in a terminal server environment. I can turn on the remote cursor, I can do a view only session, and then of course I can make this whole thing full screen. Now, I can go to commands and send a control alt delete. I can block the remote keyboard and mouse so they can't change anything while I'm working on it. Um, I can blank their screen as well as I can uh, lock the remote operating system uh, so I can lock their machine from here as well. On the interactions menu, this is where I'm gonna take a screenshot. I can send things to and from uh, the remote clipboard and the local clipboard. And I can record this session as well. I can record a video session um, here, which is really great. Let me change this size back so we can see it. Uh, on the general tab is where I'll see different information about the device and this is where I'll do a chat session. So this is a chat and of course that sends it to the other device and lets the other um, person know that there's a chat waiting for them. File transfer, uh, you can see um, just a file transfer option to be able to move files back and forth uh, very easily between the local and the remote computer. And then on the computer menu, we have the ability to do a restart and shutdown um, or emergency reboot. Now the restart and shutdown gives us several options, probably the most important of which is the safe restart and reconnect. So we can reboot a computer in safe mode and then reconnect to it um, from the MSP Anywhere Take Control version of the engine. Okay, well, that's it uh, in terms of the demo. Uh, the other feature that in case you uh, kind of, uh, in case it, I glazed over it is that this is a Mac that I'm using. So I am able to do a remote control session from a Mac into a Mac or a PC. Um, so MSP Anywhere, one of the major advantages is the additional uh, support for using a Mac as your technician device uh, rather than being limited to a Windows PC or running a virtual machine on a Mac. Okay, well, thanks guys for uh, watching this and hope you have a great day.